It's time now for the best high school sports action from the WBCB Sports Network. Catch the best games from Bucks and Mercer County at WBCBSports.com and our Facebook page. Your home for high school sports is right here at WBCB 1490. Good morning. Welcome to 10th and Bigler in South Philadelphia, the South Philly Super Site for Week 11 coverage of Conwell Egan Catholic Football on the WBCB Sports Network. Today, the Conwell Egan Catholics take on the Newman Garetti Saints for the District 12 3A first round playoff action. And it's brought to you by the Pines Tavern, St. Mary Medical Center, the Revere Restaurant, Team Toyota, Conwell Egan Catholic High School, Lower Bucks Hospital, Finney McGee's Pub, and the Trentonian. This is the Trentonian pregame show, getting you to the kickoff in just a little bit. Again, Conwell Egan Catholic visiting Newman Garetti as the Eagles will take on the Saints. And you know what, Gus? I always said to myself, wouldn't it be awesome to be down in South Philadelphia on a Sunday for Eagles football? And look, here we are, <laughs> South Philly. It's Sunday morning. And we got Eagles football on WBCB. Yeah, we do. We have Eagles football. And, man, this is just beautiful. Just seeing the stadiums to your right and getting some Eagles football right ahead of us. Ah, oh, this should be a fun one today. A great site, a turf field, a, a great facility here for today's clash. And on WBCB, in fact, we'll have a double header of Eagles football for you. First, a live stream here on YouTube of the Conwell Egan Catholic Eagles and Newman Garetti in the District 12 3A playoffs. And then later on this afternoon, at 1490 AM and 107.3 FM, the Eagles taking on Dallas down here in South Philadelphia. So this area is going to get crazy. And Conwell Egan Catholic hoping to make it kind of chaotic as early as possible. You know, get get uh, get things going here against Newman Garetti with a quick start to today's game. The first time these two teams met, Gus, it did not go the way Conwell Egan Catholic was hoping they hung in there, but ended up falling short a 28 to 14 final in that first clash. Yeah, but they kept it close most of that game, and it was very competitive. So you look at that game, you 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 premise this what you did in that game, bring it into this game. Think about you know it's playoff football, it's a whole different breed. It's I think this is going to be a very very close game today. And that's one of the things that Koji Techman was pointing at the fact that they hung in in that first game, and that's going to be a key for them today. Hang in there. Wait to see if Newman Garetti potentially makes any mistakes, and if they do, capitalize on those errors. And the other thing that they felt like they learned from that first game was that the Newman Garetti front is for real. And they had trouble running the football, so might mix in a few more throws here today. And at quarterback for Egan, you'll see both number 15, junior Tom Gantz, and number nine, Stephen Tryon. And Stephen Tryon has been in this Egan offense, so he knows what's up. Tom Gantz has only been with the team since July. So they're mixing him in a little bit more, and we may see both of those numbers as signal callers today for Egan. Meanwhile, for head coach Albie Crosby in his seventh season with Newman Garetti, it's going to be number 10, senior quarterback Makai Wharton running the show. And in that first game, what... It was kind of tough to run against Newman Garetti. Mm. Newman Garetti, they moved the football on the ground pretty effectively against Egan, and that's one of the things that they're going to have to shore up today, uh, a, a tough ground attack from the Saints. Yeah, absolutely, and it's been working for him all season. You saw it work for him against this Egan team earlier, so this new McGretti team, they're just going to keep wanting to pound the ball on this Egan defense, and like you said, this Egan defense, that's one of the things they're going to have to solve in this game that they couldn't in the last game that they versed them. Have to figure out how to limit the A and B gats opening up so well, figuring out how to get these running backs from going north and south and just really slowing down this Newman Gretti offense. And towards the end of that game, really, that the Saints started to move the ball 
effectively like mm-hmm. that on the ground. Yeah. But when Coach Techman looked back at that first game that these two teams played, he felt like his team really put together a very good defensive effort. And they're going to need to score some more points than they did in game number one and kind of get that side of the football going a little bit more. But with the exception of a special teams play and an explosive play, they felt like they they played pretty well uh, mm-hmm. against the Saints, played even. And again, that's what they're going to hope for today, to hang in there in this game as the captains head to midfield and get us closer to kickoff on WBCB. Senior Carmen Bombera out there with quarterback Makai Wharton and Samir Bromfield, one of the defensive linemen representing the Saints. And for the Eagles, Gavin Pond out there with Milton Polonese representing Conwell Egan Catholic football. And they have fought to a 6-4 and four overall record. Newman Garetti 8-1 and one this season. Winner moves on to take on Kip Dubois next in the three, heading towards a, a, a potential 3A championship. And you look what Newman Garetti did last year. They won this game, and they went all the way to the 3A championship, kind of indicating the strength of the Philadelphia Catholic League. So Egan winning the coin flip, and they will take the football. The other captain out there for the Birds, Hunter Ginsburg. Yeah, right here in the shadow of Citizens Bank Park, the South Philly super site. That's where Conwell Egan Catholic and the Newman Garetti Saints will get ready for some Sunday morning high school football on the WBCB Sports Network. All right, and right now we're going to step aside, take care of a couple of quick messages, and return with the kickoff of today's game. This has been the Trentonian pregame show, and when we return, the District 12 3A playoff game, Egan and NG coming up on BCB. BCWSA customers, former Phillies pitcher Tommy Green here. I played on the 1993 National League champs, so I know a thing or two about what it's like playing on a winning team. BCWSA has all the ingredients. They make it easy for their customers to get automatic updates by text, email, or phone anytime there is a disruption in your service area. You can even customize your alerts by going to bcwsa.net. That's bcwsa.net. BCWSA, your partner for a safer environment. BCWSA, proven. From Philadelphia to the Lehigh Valley and everywhere in between, For 150 years, Penn Community Bank has been a part of your neighborhood. Helping businesses start, supporting families as they grow, and staying connected to the people and places that make this region special. It's who we are and where we're from. Penn Community Bank, here we are and here we grow. Are you living with relentless pain? St. Mary has a new way to help. Knee and hip replacements with a smarter process for faster recovery, earning prestigious awards for quality and value. A rapid recovery program has you walking just hours after surgery. And breakthrough advances, such as custom-fit joints, position you for a longer pain-free life. 215-710-5888. St. Mary Orthopedics. It's your health. Expect more. All right, welcome back. Welcome back to South Philadelphia here on a Sunday morning high school football on the WBCB Sports Network. Conwell Egan Catholic earning their way into today's game with a big win over Archbishop Carroll. Meanwhile, Newman Garetti, the only team that they have been defeated by was a team they had to head out of state to play a team elder a big uh, Cincy powerhouse, but besides that, they have uh, not been upended. Tops in PCL Blue, eight and one coming into today's game. And teeing it up for them is gonna be Nicholas Hamilton, their junior kicker. Dropping back to receive Tim Gipley and Sam Cooper. A beautiful day for high school football sunshine in South Philadelphia. And we're underway in the District 12 3A playoffs. It's Gipley taking it from the nine. Little shake and bake at the 20 yard line and that's as far as he's gonna get with the kick return. 
They'll actually mark it at the 21, Egan football, first and 10 from their own 21 yard line. Good kick there. And good distance, you know, good coverage by the Newman Garetti kick coverage. And Egan, as they get to work, you look back at that Carroll game, it was a good one for their quarterback, mm -hmm. number nine, the senior, Stephen Tryon. And he operates from the gun. Hands off on first down, gives it to Hex. Hezekiah Hex Walker is in there for Sincere Ferry, who's unfortunately unable to be out there for the Eagles today. Hex yeah. Walker with uh, no gain on first down. Yeah, and it's a big loss for the Eagles to not have Sincere out there. One of their big uh, contributors on the offensive ball side of the ball. No question, offense and defense. And defense, yeah. And even a special teams threat. So uh, they're going to have to have that next man up attitude as Tryon under center this time. Tries to throw into the flat, and it's deflected, incomplete, nearly intercepted by Deshaun Dodson. Had the big hand out there, and the senior almost able to haul that one in. Man, he got up there putting those big paws on that ball, almost coming away with like a J.J. Watt pick, of one of those swat down in your arms, but... Man, this is a first couple good plays by this new Migaretti defense. Yeah, now it's forced Egan into a third and 10 on the opening drive here of this Sunday morning. It's a beautiful morning, such a beautiful day out. We had a chilly uh, Friday night and it's warmed up a little bit as Tryon from the gun takes a high snap, pulls it down, he's fluffed from the pocket, throws incomplete, intending that one for Abu Fafana, but incompletion brings up fourth and 10, and Egan gonna kick away. Back deep to receive goes Eric Dorsey and Amaj Goins. I mean, Amaj Gowans. Yeah, and that's exactly the way you wanted to start if you're this new McGrady defense, getting a th quick three and out from this Egan Eagles and trying to get the ball in the end zone early. So again, dangerous return guys for the Saints. As the punt goes off the side of the foot and goes out of bounds on the far side of the field. We'll see where they mark this. This is gonna be great field position for Newman Goretti up at maybe the 35. Oh no, they're gonna say that went out of bounds at the 31 yard line. Oof, shanking the punt and gives the Saints a big opportunity early with 10.55 to go uh, first quarter. Yeah, we saw the Saints, they had a guy coming in into the backfield very quickly, so maybe that is uh, one of the reasons why it was a muff punt. A little bit nervous seeing the guy come and trying to kick. I know I'd get nervous seeing a guy run at me. And now the Saints will get their offense working from Egan territory. Movement and a pass out into the flat. Flag comes out. Makai Wharton able to get it to yeah, Bambara. It doesn't and matter. He's going to go into the end zone, but it looks like this is likely coming back. Yeah, there's a holding there, I believe, on number 56 of Newman Garetti. Kind of holding and then just not giving the defensive back his right to go after the ball carrier. And it is a block in the back. Oh, block in the back. Okay. I think that was the indication there. And so it'll be first and 20. Actually make it first and 21 from where that flag was thrown. A costly penalty for the Saints after they had great field position. Mm -hmm. And now behind the sticks quite a bit Directing traffic, Makai Wharton. And it seems like Saints a little bit confused. They finally get things set up. In motion goes Gowans. And they'll throw, complete. Wide open. And all the way down to the 24 yard line. They get it in there to Carter Bashir, the tight end and the sophomore with a big play. 
That almost gets them the first down, but even with that big pickup, they're still looking at a second down, a yard to go. Yeah, you see that soft coverage by the Egans there and just letting the tight end just fall right in the middle. Wharton from the gun, actually a pistol formation and he'll hand it off to Kabir Prescott. And Prescott, they got him by the leg and wouldn't let go. Tackle made on the play by Hunter Ginsburg. One of the Conwell Egan Catholic captains. It's a tackle for a loss. Third and three for Newman Goretti on their first possession of the morning. For Egan, it was a three and out. Their first time they had the football. Yeah, and this one might sting a little bit more, though, because of the field position that Newman Goretti has. And with this field position, gives Coach Crosby some more options, likely going to be four down territory. Allows them to open up the playbook and hand the football off. They do give it to Page, and Page picks them up. A Newman Goretti first down. Puts them inside the red zone at yeah. the 19-yard line. Yeah, not a big gain, but exactly what you needed just to get the first down, and that's why getting that big yardage back on that First and 20 helped so much. You got Page in the backfield with Wharton. Two receivers to the far side of the field and they'll give to Terrence Page. And Page with a nice gain off left tackle. They get inside the 15 to the, down to the 14 yard line. A six yard pickup and this guy's up front for Egan called on to make a stand. Again, Wharton with Page in the backfield and gives to Page and a fumble on the play and Egan comes up with it. Oh wow. Forcing the fumble is Hunter Ginsburg and the Eagles take it away. Huge play in the first quarter with just under eight minutes to go. Looked like Newman Gretti on the march. Yeah, and we were just talking about if Newman Gretti weren't able to pick up that first down, that, that three and out would have stung because of the field position. Well, that fumble stings even more because turning the ball over that deep into the Egan zone, man, that's a, that's a tough one. Now for the Eagles, though, need to get that offense going. Couldn't gain a yard the first time they had it. This time they give it to Sam Cooper and Cooper grinds out three yards. Gets it up near the 20 yard line. Eagles at the Newman Goretti 19. Again, District 12, 3A playoff action. Opening round between these two. The winner moves on to play Kip Dubois. They've had a good season, but that uh, seems to me to be a winnable game for whoever moves on. Yeah, absolutely. As Tryon goes under center, full backfield, and he'll look to throw. Downfield, has his man, Milton Polonese. But the pass incomplete. Looked like Polonese had a step on the Ooh, defenders. He got past that DV, and if that was a perfectly thrown ball, that might have been in the end zone, but good recovery. Good recovery by the DBs for Newman Gretti to try to fight that out of the hands. Brings up third and six. And what seems like a, a big third down play early in this one to see what type of what type of options Conwell Egan feels comfortable with it right now. Seems like they're having some confusion getting the play in, and they will use a timeout. So timeout taken with 7-11 to go first quarter. 7-11. <laughs> and tonight, today's game brought to you by Conwell Egan High School. They hope you're enjoying the game. Conwell Egan High School in Fairless Hills, where students build character, achieve excellence, and demonstrate commitment. 
Comwell Egan High School offers students innovative academic curriculum, preparing them for college and beyond. For more information about our academics and athletic programs, visit ConwellEgan.org. That's ConwellEgan.org. So the Trentonian powers our pregame shows on the WBCB Sports Network. Today we had our Trentonian pregame show, and each week the Trentonian's prognosticator will make some picks on different high school football games. And this week he looked at the Conwell Egan Newman Garetti game here on third and six. Hold on a second as uh, they get set to snap the football. Again, try on under center. They look to give on a counter and not much there. A couple of yards. It's going to bring up fourth and about five to go. Carry there from Taynor and Egan will punt it away. So he looked at this game and sometimes I can't always tell what the prognosticator is even picking. Yeah. But he <laughs> pointed out the fact that Newman Gretti's uh, one of their famous graduates is the legendary Jerry Blavitt. Oh. And the Geeter with the Heater also is on the afternoon, late afternoons every weekday Always. on WBCB. It's right. the Geeter with the Heater. I'll start. Back to kick here is uh, Johnny Osterberry and movement before the snap. So I couldn't tell. I think just by mentioning that fact, the prognosticator is leaning towards, towards Newman, Newman Garetti. Garetti. Yeah. Um, Did he not say anything about Egan? No, I, huh? I think typically he doesn't say a whole lot. Prognosticator, you silly guy. Osterbury, a better punt this time, comes down at the 47-yard line. And a tackle made right away by Kadir Young. He takes care of Gowans, but still pretty good field position for the Saints to start this drive as they're just in Egan territory at the 48-yard line. 6.09 to go, first quarter. Yeah, typically the prognosticator will mention some random fact, and I think whatever team that it's fact is about, that's kind of the way he's leaning in that game. Interesting. And timeout on the field, 6.09 to go. Newman Garetti going to talk it over, and as they do, remind you that if you miss any of today's game, you can read about it in tomorrow's Trentonian. For complete local, local and national news, seven days a week, it's the Trentonian or online at Trentonian.com, the only newspaper serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer County seven days a week. It's the Trentonian. And today's game also brought to you in part by Lower Bucks Hospital. Since 1954, Lower Bucks Hospital has supported the youth of our community and is an acute care hospital. And if you look at this game on paper, Certainly, Newman Garetti would have uh, the edge 8-1 and one coming into today's contest. They beat Egan in the first matchup. But it's a whole new day today as Wharton gets the offense going. And from the gun, he'll hand off. Tackle made by Gavin Pond. It's a gain of think about, about three. three. Yeah. Raheem Jefferson that time on the carry. So back-to-back -back drives for Newman Garetti in plus yard fields. What was that, at the mid? Was that the 50 when it first was, the first down? I think it was at the uh, It was past the 50, yeah. 48, so back-to-back -back opening drives for Newman Garetti past the 50-yard line. And a flag comes out. As a spin move by Makai Mitchell at the line of scrimmage gains him some positive yardage, but this one coming back, false start. Oh, false start. On the Saints. I'm just always used to when it's a false start, the play gets called dead. So that'll bring up second and 12. And again, Coach Techman said one of the keys for the Eagles today, hang in there, play the Saints even, wait maybe for some miscues. 
And right there, a, a false start, setting them back. Behind the sticks, motion man is Gowans. Wharton from the pocket, throws over the middle, and it's incomplete, had his man, and the ball was there, but ends up hitting the turf. Tough one there, looked like a good throw, just a little bit of low, so the receiver had to go low with it, and looked like when he hit the ground, it just might have came loose. Why, Deke Collier <laughs> unable to haul that one in. So now the Egan defense with an opportunity to get this Saints offense off the field. Looking at a third and 12 from midfield. 4.50 to go here in the first quarter this morning. Some Sunday morning high school football. Wharton takes the snap, drops back, but flag flies, false start. The uh, Newman Goretti back five more yards to their own 45 yard line. Yeah, so this was a possession that started on the other side of the 50, and yeah. now because of some penalties, they're back to their own 45, looking at a, a tough third and long. Again, the only loss this season was a team out of state for this Newman Goretti team, Elder a big high school football powerhouse. They have been rolling this season. But so far scoreless in this District 12 3A playoff game. Wharton has a clean pocket and time. He'll roll to the near side and now he's gonna tuck it and go. Wharton forced out of bounds by Egan right at the 40 six yard line. Yeah, so gets a lot of that penalty yardage back, but still is gonna be a fourth and long. Now Egan, they have uh, an inclination when they score touchdowns. They typically do not bring out a place kicker. And I don't know if they have- um, A punter either. Somebody who typically punt. Looks like they yeah, weren't they're, gonna go for it. Going for fourth it. and eight. From the Egan 47. Three receivers up top, one to the near side for Wharton, who drops back. Again, time, flush from the pocket. Looked like a hold there that the officials miss as Wharton streaks downfield along the near side, eventually pushed out of bounds by Zorea. But that's enough for an, a Saints first down. Yeah, there was definitely a hold there, but you know, no call in a, a big game by uh, Wharton there. Yeah, and that hold allowed Wharton to escape the pocket and gave him a lane down the near yeah. side. Walking the tightrope. So with 4.26 to go, again, the Saints on the move. Last time they were in this area of the field, a forced fumble by Egan. Got the Eagles the ball back. Now it's running back Makai Mitchell in the backfield with Wharton as he moves some receivers around. They got three guys up top, one to the near side, and the give goes to Mitchell, and Mitchell bottled up a loss on the play. Gavin Pond in there with the stop along with Colin Walker. I love how passionate these Newman Gretti fans are. It sounds like there's a thousand of them but there's, you know, just a normal crowd. I love it. Yeah, yeah they definitely. That's what comes with Catholic football. Get though, spirited you know? yeah. for the Saints. Second and long and got high expectations for this eight and one team. But behind the sticks again, second and 12 after an unsuccessful run play on first down. Pistol formation, Wharton gives it to Mitchell. Mitchell working his way through the defense, gets back to the original line of scrimmage before he gets bottled up. Stop on the play made by Colin Walker, brings up third and eight. 
And we're getting fought, fought with a B right now. There we go. And a good, a good run right there. Just try to pick up some of that penalty yardage back. Even when Newman Gretti is shooting themselves in the foot, they're at least getting the yardage back and helping themselves out after hurting themselves. Seems like right now the Saints more successful through the air than they have been on the ground. Yeah. I feel like they're wasting a lot of clock, clock though, right now. I thought, we'll there was a, I thought there was a timeout for a second, but there isn't. What, what will they do here? Third and eight. Motion man is Gowans. They throw on the slant, and incomplete. it's incomplete. Oh, uh, that was great coverage there by Egan. Just getting a hand in and just ripping that ball out. Fantastic coverage by the DB. Looking for Carter Bashir, and a good throw from Wharton. He had that one in there, but the defense just a little bit too good. And the pass breakup for Egan brings up fourth and eight. With two and a half to go, first quarter, still scoreless in this District 12 3A playoff game. Looks like same formation, Mitchell in the backfield with Wharton. You got four receivers here for the NGQB. Who drops back, he's got time, throws and hits his man. It's Collier who goes into the end zone for a touchdown. It's me, Carter Bashir the sophomore tight end with the TD. Yeah, we just said how Wharton had a great throw in that play before there. Another really good throw, fighting for the extra yardage and getting in for the end zone. And Bashir, a sophomore tight end, but he's got a big body as a great target for his quarterback. And with 2.17 to go, first quarter, the Saints strike first in this District 12 playoff game. And like I said, their inclination, they don't usually opt to do the point after. They go for two. So Wharton with Mitchell in the backfield and gives it to Mitchell, who powers forward and looking for the signal. I don't think he, he got is in. not in. Wow. The try is no good. So with 2.17 remaining first quarter, we come back up the field to score 6 nothing. Newman Garetti in front of Conwell Egan Catholic. And don't forget to watch the Coaches Roundtable show on WBCB. Brought to you in part by Lower Bucks Hospital since 1954. Lower Bucks Hospital supporting the youth of our community and an acute care hospital and don't forget to you miss any of today's action. Read all about it in tomorrow's Trentonian. Complete local and national news seven days a week. It's the Trentonian or online trentonian.com. The only newspaper serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer counties. Down here in South Philadelphia for some Sunday morning football. And Newman Garetti striking first. A touchdown throw from senior quarterback Makai Wharton. Their attempt after the TD, no good. And Nick Hamilton with an end over end kickoff taken by Egan at the 20. And a short return over there by Gipley. And you mentioned it on the first kickoff. Uh, Newman's coverage guys uh, did a good job the first time and did a good job the second time as well. Yeah, good job there by uh, the kick coverage. Just taking it deep and uh, being able to not allow this Egan team to really have any of a return. Yeah, so here they start at the 26. And this time it's Gantz at the quarterback spot. He looks to throw. He's flushed from the pocket. Will tuck it and go. Take it across the 30 to the 32 and finishes that run by lowering the shoulder and getting what he can. A tough play there by Tom Gantz up to the 31. Picks up four. Gantz under center, backs in the eye. And the give to the tailback. 
is good for just a yard. So not much there as they give it to Taynor. And a makeable third down now, yeah. but on this side of the field, you got to get it done on third down. Otherwise, I think probably Osterberry might be back out to play a little field position. Third and four, and they take it right up the gut. But tackle made by Samir Bromfield. Egan up to the 35. And yeah, they will bring Osterbury back out. Yeah, I feel like if they were anywhere else on the field, they might have would have gone for it. It's only a fourth and three, but being on their side of the 50, yeah, you don't want to you don't want to give Newman Garetti good field position. And Osterbury didn't have a great punt the first time, but he is an all Catholic league kicker. Yeah. As a kicker and a punter from last season. So they look to him to flip the field. Nice snap and an end over end kick. Much better comes down point. and takes a great bounce for the Eagles inside the 20 down to the 10 yard line. And actually that'll be touched up there by Milton Polonese at the 11. So first time for Newman Gretti where they've got the ball on their own side of the field. Yeah. And, and uh, deep in their own territory. Yeah, this one's deep. So they, if they're going to want to score on this drive, they're, it's probably going to have to be one of their best drives of the game. Yeah, they're going to have to go a ways here as we reach the final few seconds of the first quarter. Nineteen point four on the first quarter clock. The Newman Garetti Saints. First and 10 from their own 11 yard line. Today's game brought to you by St. Mary Medical Center. We thank them for their support of high school football throughout the season on WBCB. Wharton from the gun, hands off on first down. Flag comes out as Page crosses the 15, but holding against Newman Garetti. Uh, so that will force them back half the distance to the goal. And they'll mark it down at the five yard line. And that's the end of the first quarter here in the District 12 3A playoffs. Newman Garetti in front, six to nothing. And today's game brought to you by Conwell Egan High School. They hope you're enjoying the game. Conwell Egan High School in Fairless Hills where students build character, achieve excellence, and demonstrate commitment. Conwell Egan High School offers students innovative academic curriculum, preparing them for college and beyond. For more information about academics and athletic programs, visit conwell-egan.org. That's conwell-egan.org. Thanks also to Finney McGee's 1400 Farragut Avenue in Bristol. Open seven days with brand new kitchen management, offering some of the best food specials in the area. Try Finney McGee's burgers, including their Guinness cheeseburger, a half pound burger topped with Guinness gravy, sauteed onions, and provolone cheese. Or you can try Finney McGee's sandwiches, Finney McGee witches, like their boardwalk sausage and peppers, or the fat Elvis egg rolls stuffed with peanut butter, bananas, and a side of fluffernutter sauce. Fanny McGee's Pub, 1400 Farragut Avenue in Bristol, open Monday through Thursday from three to 11, and on Fridays, they're open three to 1 a.m. Saturdays open noon to one, Saturdays noon to nine. Fanny McGee's Pub, proud sponsors of Conwell Egan Catholic Football, on WBCB, so Egan, they pushed Newman Garetti deep in their own territory, and it's first and 16 from the six yard line. And that handoff blown up 
Another good play by Hunter Ginsburg. He was the guy who forced the fumble earlier here for this Egan defense. And that was another TFL, right? That was a loss of a yeah, couple. Yeah, I think it was a loss of one or two there. So first, it'd be second and 17. Football just inside the five yard line. And we've got the second quarter underway on BCB. Beautiful sunny Sunday morning from 10th and Big Bigler, the South Philadelphia super site. Wharton with receivers all over the place. He's got time, rolls and throws low, oh. and it's caught. Wow! A great grab over there. Looked like a flag came out here uh, on the near side. I, I believe be that's going to be a sideline yeah. warning, and I think this play is going to stand as a first down for Newman Garetti and a great, a great catch by Wharton. This this near side official though, he looks serious. I don't know what uh, he's what happened happy. to him, but um, he was the guy who threw that flag. For Newman Gritty, you look at the body language, it's not good. They got uh, the, the palms up towards the sky, wondering what the heck injustice has just befallen them. And let's see what the officials have to say. Personal foul, sideline warning against Newman Garetti. Right? I... I I typically don't see the personal foul attached to the sideline warning. Usually it's just the, the, the old hand wave signal. Yeah, that's... yeah this, this, is, this is a different kind of sideline infraction here. A, a, a personal foul sideline infraction. So that, that official, he must have banged right into somebody down there maybe. And, yeah, got um, tripped or something. Huh. Okay. Yeah, there there was some contact down there. We're getting some clarification up top. Thank you for that. So and yeah, running into the coach that'll uh, that'll happen if you're that close to the sideline. And, and that's now getting to be about a handful of yeah. plays where Newman Garetti has gotten some flags that have um, hurt them, and that was a that really was was bad. Is they had a great pass play that is negated. First and 10, and they throw out to the flat. Complete it. So yeah, you still get a free set of downs with the first down, but yep. you really don't go anywhere because you know you started at the 11, go back to the six. Now you're at around the 15. Ball caught by Kamir Prescott. Yes, yeah, so they do get the benefit of the catch. And then afterwards that personal foul Sets them back near where they were before. But they get a fresh set of downs. That time the catch made by Kamir Prescott. But he just got back to the line of scrimmage second and 10. Four receivers here for Wharton. And he hands the ball off. And there is Page up across the 20. Up to the 22. Shy of a first down by three yards. Third down with 9.21 and counting in the first half. Anytime you get into these third down situations, opportunity for the defense to make a play as Wharton will hand off. And that play is snuffed out. Great job up front by Chase Walters. The sophomore drops the running back at the line of scrimmage and brings up fourth and short. And again, Newman Garetti, we talked about their kicking game. They're gonna risk it at their own 28 yard line and go for a fourth and two, unless yeah. they're gonna bring Wharton out to try to quick kick it. Wharton's back there with Prescott and Gowans. 
Gowans goes in motion and the handoff is to Page and Page with a spin move. Terrence Page spinning for a Newman Garetti first down across the 35 to the 36 yard line. Yeah, put him in the spin cycle there. And now we're down under eight minutes to go. And again, same formation. You got Gowans and Page. Gowans in motion to the far side of the field. And that time, that run, nothing doing for Newman Garetti. Just back to the line of scrimmage, no gain. So second and 10. So pretty much Newman Gretty now at the spot where that big pass originally ended up before the sideline penalty. Again, running backs to either side of Makai Wharton. And Wharton will drop back and look to throw. Looking for Prescott, and he's got him. A great catch by Kamir Prescott. Defensively there, Tim Gipley was all over the receiver, but just a great throw. Man, he and a aired beautiful that grab. Thing out. Absolutely aired it out there. Whew. And Prescott, great job to work the sideline, do a little tippy tap. Yeah, that, that was a pretty impressive catch too, because he's running down the right sideline and he jumps in the air and moves his body mid air to catch that ball. Fantastic catch. So the Saints on the move. Wharton gives to Page. And Page back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Gavin Pond gobbles him up. Uh, looked like he only got back to the line of scrimmage. They will give him a couple of yards. Got kind of a weird angle, but that seemed yeah. like a pretty uh, good spot for the Saints. Second and eight from the Egan 20. Under six minutes to go, first half. And Wharton fakes the handoff, cuts to the outside, has running room down to the five. He's banged down by Sam Cooper. But that's enough to put the Saints in a goal to go situation and after the play, one of the Newman Garetti players slow to get up and there's an injury timeout with 5.29 to go in the District 12 3A playoff game. And as that player gets looked at, we'll step aside and return to action in just a moment here from South Philly. Are you living with relentless pain? St. Mary has a new way to help. Knee and hip replacements with a smarter process for faster recovery, earning prestigious awards for quality and value. A rapid recovery program has you walking just hours after surgery. And breakthrough advances, such as custom fit joints, position you for a longer pain-free life. 215-710-5888. St. Mary Orthopedics. It's your health. Expect more. All right, first and goal for Newman Garetti from the two yard line. They hand it off and waiting to see. No, not a touchdown. Close for Kamir Prescott. But he gets them inside the one, but not into the end zone. Yeah, they're down there though. They're just inches away from getting in. I 
And hand off, and it's a touchdown. And Egan, unfortunately, can't stop Newman Goretti. After the play, a flag is thrown. But with four and a half to go, it's 12 nothing. The Saints in front in this District 12 3A game. I believe this touchdown is going to stand. There is a flag on the field. And now officials will go over and I guess uh, explain what's going on to Egan. They it will be unsportsmanlike conduct on Newman Goretti called after the touchdown. So the touchdown stands and the penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Well, I guess Egan has the option to assess it on the try. And so instead of assessing the the 15 yard penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct on the kickoff, they will push Newman Goretti back to the 17 yard line, which is pretty good strategy when you have a team that doesn't do a lot of place kicking and only goes for two because this could be uh, a tough play as Wharton drops back, throws the football over the middle, bounces around, and lands incomplete. Looked like it might have bounced off a helmet as it comes ricocheting off of somebody. Damn. The try is no good, so we come back up the field with the score 12-0. Newman Goretti in front of Egan in District 12. 3A playoff action and today's game brought to you by the Trentonian. Read about today's game in tomorrow's Trentonian. Outstanding local and national sports coverage that you can count on seven days a week. It's all in the Trentonian. So a one yard touchdown and a touchdown throw. And now Egan really pushed into a spot where they need to get something going in this last four minutes and 30 seconds of the second quarter. Yeah, just all really Newman Goretti in this first half. Teed up for Nicholas Hamilton. Back deep. Cooper and Taynor. As that's going to be Sam Cooper who takes it at the 16 yard line up to the 20 25 before he is pushed out of bounds. Another good job for the Newman Goretti coverage guys. That time looked like Jaden Green over there helping to force Sam Cooper out. So first and 10 for the Eagles, and they have time now, 422. Time to operate this offense without feeling like you're hurried up or you need to change your approach. Yeah, interesting. Get the run game going, you yeah. still got a couple of timeouts left. Absolutely. And Tryon will take the high snap, hand it off, and unfortunately just not able to hold on to his footing right there was Tayshawn Tainer. Looked like he was about to bounce that to the outside, but slipped down. No gain, second and 10. No gain, it has been a struggle today for this Egan offense. They mix it up with a couple of different QBs right now. They're back to having Steven Tryon under center. And he'll throw. It completes it. Oh, out. incomplete. Oh, Milton Polonese 
was the intended guy on the outside, and I thought he had it in his hands, but unable to hold on. Yeah, it looks like he had it, just another one of those things where you you get the catch, you fall down to the ground, and then the ground just loosens the ball. Yeah, unable to complete the catch here as you meet the turf. 3.38 to go, and now what feels like a critical third and 10 for Egan with the three and a half to go. You don't want to give it right back to the Saints. This time, pistol formation. Tryon will throw out to the flat to Sam Cooper, and it goes off of his hand and incomplete. Not a bad idea. Get the football out to one of your most explosive offensive players, but unfortunately just couldn't make that connection. And with 3.34 to go, Johnny Ostraberry. The punter back out. And for Egan, he's been a little bit too busy in this first half of play. Yeah, a little bit more busy than his liking. Back deep to receive the kick. Amaj Gowans. And Gowans will think about playing it on a bounce, and he'll just let that one fall. And... Bounces for Egan across the 30 down to the 27 yard line. And so Newman Goretti with 319 to go will have the football at their own 27 in the District 12 3A opening round playoff game and already on top 12 to nothing. Egan's got to make sure that, man, unless they can get the football back and. Uh, make a big play on defense at the very least that they go into the break with the score 12 nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, trying to limit the damage here in this first half. Last time these two teams played, Egan had a 14-12 lead early in the game. It was a 20 to 14 halftime lead for the Saints and then they added another touchdown to win that game on October 13th, 28 to 14. Here, Wharton getting back to work. Takes the snap, throws quickly out to Terrence Page. Page cuts it upfield to the 30, stays on his feet, splits a couple of tacklers. Up to the 40-yard line is Terrence Page. Ultimately, it's Gavin Pond who forces him out of bounds, but that's a big enough pickup for a Saints first down. Colin Walker also over there to force him out of bounds, but a big Big play right there for Page. The sophomore running back has done big things for Newman Goretti this season. And this certainly would be a, a big win for either team to move on in this 3A bracket and face Kip Dubois. Coming up next, first and 10. Handoff as they look to try it right tackle and not a whole lot there that time for Makai Mitchell. But even where it doesn't look like they're picking up a lot of yardage, there's still, it's positive gains for the Saints. That time, what looked like not much was a pickup of four, mm -hmm. second and six. Wharton in the backfield, he's got Mitchell with him and gives it to Mitchell. Mitchell steps through a tackle at the 50. He is flattened at the 45, but that's enough to move the sticks. Tackle that time made by Elijah Rankin. But not before Newman Goretti get a fresh set with 208 and counting here in the first half. So they don't have a ton of time, still holding on to two timeouts. No, but they showed that they, they can have an explosive play here and there, just like in the last drive with the big pass from play. Yeah, they went downfield to Kamir Prescott. Right now it's Mitchell on the side of Wharton. Wharton takes the snap, throws to the other side of the field again, looking for Prescott, oh. and he brings in the catch. Sam Cooper there was defensively, was there defensively for Egan, and yeah, they throw to Prescott. The ball bounced off 
into the air, and he still is able to come down with the football. A first and goal at the 10-yard line for the Saints. Yeah, pretty impressive catch there. Uh, a circus catch. Prescott making big plays for the Saints. Wharton again gets him back to work. Gives it to Mitchell. Mitchell up the gut across the 10 to the 8-yard line. Picks up a couple of tough yards. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Newman Goretti, Wharton, looking into the end zone. Throws, and it's caught for a touchdown. Yeah, but on hold play, on though. a second. Flag down. They get YD Collier. But this one looks like it might be coming back. It is a legal man downfield uh. on Newman Goretti. So a break for Egan with 39.2 left. And thus far in the first half, the only thing that has stopped the Saints, Egan did force a fumble, but their own penalties and miscues at least have slowed them down a little bit. Yeah. That one, a costly one, puts them back at the 13-yard line. Second and goal from there with 39.2 remaining on the second quarter clock. And this is big time. Like I said, for Egan, you got to keep it at 12 as Wharton looking into the end zone, flush from the pocket, and he is sacked on the play. Thrown down. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a holding two on Newman Goretti. Connor Horger is there. And it is against Newman Goretti. They're gonna, the hold is gonna be declined. And brings up third and goal, timeout for the Saints. So the timeout comes with 30.2 ticks. Before we get to the halftime break. Tonight's game on WBCB brought to you by the Trentonian, outstanding local and national sports coverage that you can count on seven days a week. It's all in the pages of the Trentonian. Hey, big thanks to Conwell Egan Catholic for their support and um, their consistent attendance at the High School Coaches Roundtable show. Every Wednesday, we get together at Sandy's Beef and Ale from seven to eight o'clock, and we're joined by some of the local high school football programs, Egan, Council Rock North and South, Neshaminy, Pensbury, Bristol, Morrisville. By the way, congratulations to the Morrisville Bulldogs on picking up a district championship. And we're looking forward to that Thanksgiving Day clash. But Egan always there for the High School Coaches Roundtable show as Wharton drops back third and goal, throws into the end zone, incomplete, flag thrown. And this might be on... Gipley, he was there defensively, and I think this might be a defensive P.I. Yeah, it looked like somewhat of good coverage, but maybe just holding on just a little bit too much there. Or, or the timing was just yeah. off slightly that the contact came just before the ball was in. It is pass interference on Conwell Egan Catholic. So this time, Newman Goretti getting the benefit of a call. And with 21 and a half seconds left, that could mean they get some more legitimate strikes at the end zone. Man, it looks like they're gonna have time for at least two or three more plays. Yeah. All right, so now third and goal from the 13 yard line. Motion man is Gowans. Wharton throwing to Gowans oh. in the end zone, but high and incomplete. 
And Gowans took a shot. And he is slow to get up, finally gets to his feet with 16 seconds to go in the second quarter and another timeout taken by Newman Garetti. And this time it's not to stop the clock, it's just to go over what is gonna be a big play. You're on fourth and goal from the 13 yard line. Today's game brought to you by Finney McGee's, 1400 Farragut Avenue in Bristol. Open seven days with brand new kitchen management, offering some of the best food specials in the area. Try Finney's Burgers, including their Guinness Cheeseburger, a half pound burger topped with Guinness gravy, Ooh. sauteed onions, and provolone cheese. I mean, this stuff sounds so good. Try Finney's McGee Witches, like their Boardwalk Sausage and Peppers, or the Fat Elvis Egg Rolls, Stuffed with peanut butter, bananas, and a side of fluffernutter sauce. Yes, uh, <laughs> that sounds good. Thank, 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 you, thank you very much. <laughs> Finney McGee's Pub, 1400 Farragut Avenue in Bristol. Open Monday through Thursday from 3 to 11. Fridays, 3 to 1. Saturdays, noon to 1. And Sundays, noon to 3. And we thank them for helping to make portions of today's game possible on BCB. Egan, they got to come up with the stop here. 16 seconds left. They're trailing 12 0 in this uh, PIAA playoff game. Fourth and goal. Wharton throws into the end zone, oh. and that's batted down. Incomplete pass broken up by Conwell Egan Catholic. Yeah, and a great coverage there. Just keeping your hips straight. Cutting to the ball and just knocking that thing down, not getting letting Newman Garetti get a chance. So a turnover on downs. Egan with the football with just under nine seconds remaining. And likely gonna just take a knee and head into the end zone, down 12 nothing. Unfortunately for the Eagles, it's Newman Garetti who will receive the Second half kick. Here's Gons under center. Let me see if that's Tryon. Ooh, big Tryon, hole. Hands off. And Taynor with a big pickup all the way up to the 35 yard line. And Egan will take a timeout with 1.7 to go. So they're not content to just no, take a knee. No, they are being aggressive right now. That was a great hole, finding it, jumping through it, and getting to the second level. And a big pickup by Taynor allows you to be more aggressive now. With only 1.7 remaining, I don't know, try some type of hook and ladder thing. Yeah, I mean, maybe just try to go deep or maybe get another run. I'm not sure, but I'm intrigued to see. Today's game brought to you by the Trentonian. We thank them for their support of high school football all throughout this season. You know, it was unfortunate we had Pensbury uh, falling to Souderton. That was one of the teams that we have followed throughout this season. Also, Notre Dame on the wrong end of uh, their result this, this weekend as well. The Notre Dame Irish in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. One of the programs that we followed throughout this high school football season. So we're counting on a W here for, for Egan. Yeah, we are. Mentioned, though, there are some other local teams like Morrisville who join us at the High School Coaches Roundtable Show. Bristol continuing to fight on. Those two teams will have a Thanksgiving Day hookup as this time it's Stephen Tryon who hands off on first down. Kind of a uh, conservative play call there. They give it to Hex on first down, and that will bring us to the end of the first half. Newman Garetti, 12. Conwell Egan Catholic, nothing in this District 12 3A first round playoff game. Stay with us, we'll step aside. Typically, it's a little bit of a briefer halftime during these PIAA mm -hmm. playoff games. We'll recap first half scoring and get you back to the action in just a little bit. Also, maybe we'll take a look at uh, see if we can find some other scores from around the area that uh, have occurred this 
this weekend. I'm, I'm kind of forgetting it's Sunday, though. Yeah, like it, it is. It's weird. We're, we're the only game in town yeah. right now when it comes to high school football, but not the only game in town when it comes to South Philadelphia. Starting to see the traffic build Oh yeah. for the Eagles and Dallas at 4 o'clock. We will have that for you on WBCB. Merrill Reese, the legend, on the call with Mike Quick. And you can catch that at 1490 AM and 107.3 FM. Proud to be part of the Eagles radio family. And uh, so that's coming up later this afternoon. But right now, halftime in this high school football game with Newman Garetti on top of Egan. We're coming back with halftime activities in just a little bit. For 150 years, Penn Community Bank has been strengthening our region, serving as a trusted partner and resource for businesses like yours. Whether you want flexible financing options, everyday banking tools, or cash flow solutions to grow your business, our team of business bankers can get you where you need to go. Real relationships, expert advice, swift solutions to power your growth. Start here, grow here, stay here. Penn Community Bank. Here we are, and here we grow. Proud to support Codwell Egan is the Pines Tavern. The Pines Tavern is your hometown tavern featuring kicked up comfort food for the whole family. Homemade soups, chili, sandwiches, appetizers, and dinner entrees, all at very reasonable prices. The Pines Tavern specialty sandwiches are the talk of the town, like their Italian roast pork or slow cooked roast beef sandwiches. Dinner entrees include fresh seafood, steaks, and chops. The Pines Tavern has big screen TVs for all your favorite sporting events. The Pines Tavern is open seven days for lunch, dinner, and late snacks. The Pines Tavern at the Fork in the Road at Radcliffe Street and Farragut Avenue. Your day-to-day -day life is hectic between having to pick up the kids, make dinner, the countless other tasks that you got to get done. Rob's Automotive and Collision is there to make your life a whole lot easier. Make sure you take advantage of their spacious waiting rooms, the large flat screen TVs, complimentary coffee and muffins, and free Wi-Fi. So even when you do have to stop, Rob's is there to make you feel right at home. Give Rob's a call today at 215-826-9200 for any of your auto repair needs. This is Tommy Green from the 1993 National League Champion Phillies, and here's the pitch. BCWSA Water and Sewer customers, you have a new and improved option to pay your bill that's convenient, reliable, and secure. Powered by Invoice Cloud, you can pay your bill 24-7 online, pay by text or phone, or sign up for auto pay to avoid fees for late or missed payments. Visit bcwsa.net to sign up or for more info. That's bcwsa.net, bcwsa, proven. From Philadelphia to the Lehigh Valley and everywhere in between, for 150 years, Penn Community Bank has been a part of your neighborhood. Helping businesses start, supporting families as they grow, and staying connected to the people and places that make this region special. It's who we are and where we're from. Penn Community Bank. Here we are, and here we grow. Don't let joint pain bring you down. See how you can get relief at a free joint pain seminar at St. Mary Orthopedics. Joint care experts will inform and answer questions about diagnosing, managing, and treating joint problems, and knowing when it's time for a joint replacement. Ready to get back to life? Get to the next free joint pain seminar. Details at stmaryhealthcare.org slash joint seminar. It's your health. Expect more. Red October is back, and so is our new Toyota inventory, with in-demand popular models arriving monthly, like the all-new Grand Highlander and Sequoia, or reliable classics like the RAV4 and Camry. And with no markups above MSRP in our teammate rewards program, you can see for yourself why our home team advantage is so important. Shop online at teamtoyota.net or visit one of our three locations in Langhorne, Glen Mills, or Princeton. 1490 WBCB Levittown and Trenton and video stream live at WBCBSports.com. Your home for the best local sports in Bucks and Mercer counties.
BCWSA customers, former Phillies pitcher Tommy Green here. I played on the 1993 National League Champs, so I know a thing or two about what it's like playing on a winning team. BCWSA has all the ingredients. They make it easy for their customers to get automatic updates by text, email, or phone anytime there is a disruption in your service area. You can even customize your alerts by going to bcwsa.net. That's bcwsa.net. BCWSA, your partner for a safer environment. BCWSA, proven. From Philadelphia to the Lehigh Valley and everywhere in between, for 150 years, Penn Community Bank has been a part of your neighborhood. Helping businesses start, supporting families as they grow, and staying connected to the people and places that make this region special. It's who we are and where we're from. Penn Community Bank, here we are and here we grow. Are you living with relentless pain? St. Mary has a new way to help. Knee and hip replacements with a smarter process for faster recovery, earning prestigious awards for quality and value. A rapid recovery program has you walking just hours after surgery. And breakthrough advances, such as custom fit joints, position you for a longer pain-free life. 215-710-5888. St. Mary Orthopedics. It's your health. Expect more. For 150 years, Penn Community Bank has been strengthening our region, serving as a trusted partner and resource for businesses like yours. Whether you want flexible financing options, everyday banking tools, or cash flow solutions to grow your business, our team of business bankers can get you where you need to go. Real relationships, expert advice, swift solutions to power your growth. Start here, grow here, stay here. Penn Community Bank, here we are and here we grow. Proud to support Codwell Egan is the Pines Tavern. The Pines Tavern is your hometown tavern featuring kicked up comfort food for the whole family. Homemade soups, chilies, sandwiches, appetizers, and dinner entrees, all at very reasonable prices. The Pines Tavern specialty sandwiches are the talk of the town, like their Italian roast pork or slow cooked roast beef sandwiches. Dinner entrees include fresh seafood, steaks, and chops. The Pines Tavern has big screen TVs for all your favorite sporting events. The Pines Tavern is open seven days for lunch, dinner, and late snacks. The Pines Tavern at the Fork in the Road at Radcliffe Street and Farragut Avenue. All right, we return to South Philadelphia, the 10th and Bigler super site for today's high school football clash between Conwell Egan Catholic and Newman Garetti. And so far, it's been Newman Garetti who's been doing most of the clashing oh, yeah. as far as the uh, the success they've had on offensively and uh, the lack of success that Egan had in that first half. They were completely bottled up. 12 to nothing is our score. And Newman Garetti g gaining 252 yards in the first half for Egan just 40 yards in the first half and no completions and they didn't get their first first down until that uh, Tayshawn Tainer run towards the end of the half came with uh, just 1.7 seconds remaining in the half before they were able to get a first down against this Newman Garetti team and Newman Garetti they haven't played the cleanest football game ever made some mistakes but um, they were able to move it enough, get it into the end zone a couple of times, and um, something's got to change for Egan in order to just change the momentum and to get some positive stuff going on uh, on the offensive side of the football. Maybe maybe working in Gantz yeah. a little bit more. It's, it, he's been out there for a series and a half, but mostly it's been Steven Tryon and Tryon had a great game against Carroll, has had a great season this year, but just to mix something up, to make a change, um, you know, that that's one lever that they might be able to, to pull on yeah. and see if something different happens in the second half of play. Yeah, well, defensively, you're only a couple big plays from the Saints from really holding them to really nothing 
on their offensive side of the ball. But yeah, like you said, the Eagles on the offensive side, they got to start switching up something, get a little bit of different scheme, different rhythm, something just to switch things up because offensively, it's just not going your way right now if you're the Eagles. And, and the Egan defense has been good but not great. Yeah. And they were good when they were able to force the fumble and stop one of the Newman Garetti drives. Mm. Good towards the end of this half where they refused to let them into the end zone and kept the score 12 to nothing, but they haven't been great because the Saints have moved the football. They gained 252 yards. And so they need to tighten things up on that side of the ball as well, but need to find some answers on offense to start to move the football consistently or I mean even find some something explosive against this team recapping first half scoring it was Newman Garetti striking first 217 to go first quarter and their senior quarterback Makai Wharton throwing it to tight end Carter Bashir the sophomore into the end zone from 17 yards away and for Newman Garetti not much of a kicking game, so they try pretty much every time to go for two, and they've been unsuccessful both times, so they didn't get it that first touchdown, 6 nothing as we came back up the field, and then the two teams kind of back and forth until the uh, 4.30 mark of the second quarter, and Newman Garetti getting it right down onto the goal line, and from one yards away, they gave it to Terrence Page, the sophomore with the one yard touchdown strike, again, unsuccessful on the try after. So 12 nothing is our score. And those were the only two TDs of the first half, both going to the Saints. And I want to say thanks to uh, one of our coll colleagues from Eastern PA football who helped us out with some stats and clarifying some of the scoring from the first half. Yeah, so time for Egan to come up with some answers and for Newman Goretti adding to their advantageous situation is the fact that they're going to receive the second half kickoff. So again, that puts the Egan Eagles a little bit further behind the eight ball at halftime here in South Philadelphia, District 12, 3A playoff action. And the winner moves on to take on Kip Dubois and yeah, last year, the winner of this game, Newman Garetti, went all the way to the state championship game and um, talking at halftime with uh, the gentleman who helped us with some stats and some scoring details. Uh, he was saying, you know, this this Newman Garetti is a, um, a, a state, you know, contender. Yeah. I'm, I'm forgetting what kind of what, he, what actually he yeah. said, but something along those lines where um, they've got the ability to go very far, and they have shown uh, the quality of football that they have played this season in the first half of today's game. We'll step aside again and return to the field in a little bit for second half action. That's coming up on WBCB. Today's game brought to you by Lower Bucks Hospital, supporting the youth of our community and an acute care hospital since 1954. All right, halftime, Newman Garetti 12, Egan nothing. We'll get back to action in just a moment. Proud to support Codwell Egan as the Pines Tavern. The Pines Tavern is your hometown tavern featuring kicked up comfort food for the whole family. Homemade soups, chili, sandwiches, appetizers, and dinner entrees, all at very reasonable prices. The Pines Tavern specialty sandwiches are the talk of the town like their Italian roast pork or slow-cooked roast beef sandwiches. Dinner entrees include fresh seafood, steaks, and chops. The Pines Tavern has big screen TVs for all your favorite sporting events. The Pines Tavern is open seven days for lunch, dinner, and late snacks. The Pines Tavern at the Fork in the Road at Radcliffe Street and Farragut Avenue. Your day-to-day -day life is hectic between having to pick up the kids, make dinner, the countless other tasks that you got to get done. Rob's Automotive Van Collision is there to make your life a whole lot easier. Make sure you take advantage of their spacious waiting rooms, the large flat screen TVs, complimentary coffee and muffins, and free Wi-Fi. So even when you do have to stop, Rob's is there to make you feel right at home. Give Rob's a call today at 215-826-9200 for any of your auto repair needs. This is Tommy Green from the 1993 National League Champion Phillies, and here's the pitch. 
BCWSA Water and Sewer customers, you have a new and improved option to pay your bill that's convenient, reliable, and secure. Powered by Invoice Cloud, you can pay your bill 24-7 online, pay by text or phone, or sign up for auto pay to avoid fees for late or missed payments. Visit bcwsa.net to sign up or for more info. That's bcwsa.net. BCWSA. Proven. Halftime here in the District 12 3A playoff game between the Eagles and the Saints. Newman Garetti in front. 12 nothing. I got a quick moment with Coach Techman before the game, and he told me there was a, a change, one of the players wearing a different number, and then as the game unfolded, I forgot he had told me <laughs> that Brian Shimp is wearing number 34, and I wish I had remembered because uh, he came up with some good plays, and um, I was like, who the heck's wearing number 34? <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, definitely uh, made his mark on the defensive side of the football for this Egan Eagle team. And you talk about the uh, the change that they need. How about the guys up front? You know, we haven't really noted who's on this offensive line. But on the one side, you got um, Hannah and Haney. And then at center, you got Horger. And I love that. You got Hannah, Hannah Haney, Haney, and, and Horger. Horger. <laughs> And that's your left tackle, left guard, and center. And you know what the nickname is for linemen? Hog Moggles. So it's all with those H's and stuff. Then at right tackle, uh, right guard, excuse me, Chase Walters. And at right tackle, Cooper Larson. And maybe that's where the difference needs to happen. Get those guys up front to win the line of scrimmage, open up some holes. Give the quarterback a little bit more time as well. I mean, one of the things we've seen, Newman Garetti, they've had a, um, Wharton's got a lot of time when he drops back to throw. Now, maybe they're sending more guys into coverage, but to get some pressure, you know, that, that might be a key to turning this thing around for Conwell Egan Catholic as we get back underway. Johnny Ostraberry. The junior with it teed up. Deep to receive is Gowans. And Osterberry has got the whistle. And we're back underway. Now into the afternoon. And that kick muffed initially. And then picked up by Prescott. Prescott with running room up to the 40 to the 45, but behind the play, a flag is thrown. And I think this is coming back yeah. on the Saints for some type of a hold or a block in the back. Yeah, and as, as many times as we've seen, it is a personal foul crack back block yeah. on Newman Garetti. A lot of self-inflicting wounds by this Newman Garetti team. And as many flags as we've seen thrown against the Saints, there was one play where it looked like there was a clear hold. Oh yeah. That they didn't get. Yep. They didn't get caught on that one. But 11:46 uh, to go. The crackback block will push them back to their own 20-yard line. First and ten. Wharton with Page and Gowans, and now Gowans goes in motion, fakes the give to Page, throws over the middle, and it's caught by Prescott. Prescott with a shake and bake at the 45. He's down to the 40 before Colin Walker gets him. But another big play as Wharton hooks up with senior Kamir Prescott, and that's the third explosive play where they've gone from number 10 to number two. Yeah, big play there. Probably one of their their third biggest play of this game, you know, besides the two big catches earlier in the first half. But Prescott was the guy in that first yeah. half, Gus, who had the beautiful catch right along the near sideline. And now as we're just back underway in the third quarter, Newman Garetti into Egan territory. The give to Page. Page bangs his way down to the 34 yard line. Two 
Terrence Page with the one yard touchdown run. The second TD of the day for the Saints. And here sets him up with a second and five. Again, Wharton, Page on his left. And the handoff goes to Terrence Page, who bursts through and up to the 25-yard line, picks up a Newman Garetti first down. Yeah, good job there. This a very successful drive so far by Newman Garetti. Overall, one of their better drives in this game. And these big pass plays have kind of softened up the Egan defense. Mm -hmm. or so it seems right now. First and 10 from the 24. There, P Page gets away from one tackler, but not from Hunter Ginsburg, who brings him down. The other guy there was Jackson Gardner. Gardner slowed him up, and Ginsburg drops him for just a yard. So second and nine. Newman Garetti on the uh, first drive of the second half. Gowans goes in motion to the near side. Wharton throws to oh! Prescott and it's picked off. Off of Prescott's hands and intercepted by Sam Cooper. Man. They go again to Kamir Prescott looking for a big play, and this time it's a big play for Egan. They take it away. Second turnover of the after of the day for Egan. We are now into the afternoon. This game started in the morning, <laughs> and with 8.52 to go, third quarter, Egan takes over from their own 35-yard line. Yeah, the classic tip drill. Ball goes in the air. You got to try to get it, and that's exactly what Egan did there. Phenomenal turnover. That throw was not off by much, no. but it was behind the receiver just a little bit. And now on first down, an explosive run up the middle for Tayshawn Tainer. And Tainer up near the 40-yard line of Newman Garetti. They'll mark him down at the 41. But mention, he had the only first down for Commonwealth League and Catholic in the first half. And they're a big play, maybe setting a whole new tone for this second half. Yeah, a whole different looking offense so far for Egan in the second half right now. It is Gons under center, I formation for the Eagles. Oh, Give balls that out. time to Tainer and it's fumbled. Looks like Egan fortunate to fall on the loose ball. They do hold on to it, lose a little bit. Second and 11. Ooh, so after an explosive play, they nearly give it right back. Yeah, an almost deadly costing turnover there. Seven and a half to go, third quarter. Gons under center. Gives to the tailback. And not a lot there for Zuryea. He gets just one, which gets him back to the original line of scrimmage, third and 10. And now you gotta get creative. Yeah. Newman Garetti Trying to get a defender off the field, and they do get the look they're looking for. Gonza's throw is tipped and incomplete. Tipped by Carmen Bambara. And the senior captain blows that play up. Fourth and 10, now from the 41-yard line. Decision time for Coach Checkman. And it looks like he's sending Gons back out there. But no, will be a punt yeah. as Johnny Osterberry. Thought about it. People from NG 
scream and watch the fake, which is always good advice, but especially with with Gonson there as one of the protectors. But it will go back to Osterberry. And he has a high spiraling kick that goes to the far side of the field, bounces down to the five, to the one, and Egan wow. able to keep it out of the end zone. They touch it up at the one yard line. So they have the Saints deep in their own end with six and a half to go in the third quarter. I'll tell you what, Chris, I thought for a second that ball was gonna roll into the end zone, but Egan doing a fantastic job of corralling it and putting it down as close as they can to the end zone. That ball was bouncing all crazy. Oh it looked like God. the Keystone Cops. Yeah. Like, I don't, you, I don't know, you get it, I get it. Oh. Finally, somebody able to get it before it snuck into the end zone. And so the Saints now have to go 99 yards as Wharton gets this drive started. And before the play, flag comes flying. I don't know if this could be a delay. I think there was 12 men. Officials counting. Yeah, and there were 12 guys for the Saints. Yeah. And so they have to move it half the distance to the goal, so they move it like to the one foot line. They are, any little mistake could get Egan into the end zone here. I mean, how big would a safety be Ooh. for this Egan defense to maybe start to flip the script and give the offense something to feel good about? Absolutely, we're already starting to say how this second half is looking a little bit different for Egan. This will really turn things around right here if this happens. Looks like everybody in tight for the Saints, maybe just trying to do a quarterback sneak to gain a little bit of ground. Yeah, they do sneak it forward for a yard. All right, I get you up to the two, but. Yeah, it's not much, but it gives you a little bit more cushion of room. Still an opportunity maybe for this Egan defense to come up with a big play. We get down close to the six minute mark of the third quarter. In District 12, 3A playoff action, the winner moves on to take on Kip Dubois and survive and advance in the PIAA playoffs. Second and nine. And again, everybody in tight, and now they'll throw the football. Oh. It's deflected oh. up into the air and incomplete. And there was number 34, Brian Shimp, right in the middle of a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, he was in the mix a lot in the first half. And, and, we already, uh, and we already just saw Egan get a tip drill interception. So down here, man, you see that ball go up. It gets nerve wracking. So now on third and 10, a change of personnel for this Newman Garetti team. They had a jumbo package in there just to give Wharton a little bit of room to work. And now he's gonna work to a full complement of receivers. He got three receivers and he's got running backs flanked on both sides. And he's gonna do a quick kick. Wharton kicks it from out of the end zone up to the 30, 40 yard line as it continues to roll. And is marked down at the 43. That's a pretty good start yeah. for Egan. It was only third down there, wasn't it? Yeah. Interesting. Very, very interesting. I guess not trying to risk them turning the ball over or letting Egan get even more or a chance to get down there. Or even have an opportunity to have a punt return. Yeah. I know, you know, the Eagles used to do that with Randall way back in the day. Oh, and, yeah. uh, Randall had one punt that just kept rolling all day. It was like yeah, a 70-yard punt. I think it was punt. a 90-yard punt. Yeah, he was at the 10. He kicked it. and just I, I remember seeing that highlight. My grandfather loved that play. And, uh ball just rolls and it was I think the longest punt ever for a quarterback <laughs> this time Wharton only gets it up to the 43 and so now Tryon gives to Taynor and Tayshon Taynor bounces it to the outside and gets up close to the 35 they'll say he's down yeah they'll give him the 35 yard line that's an eight yard pickup Egan with a lot of 
explosive players on the offensive side of the ball, but so far today, it's been Tayshawn Tainer, who's been the one who's been able to consistently pick up some good gains on the ground. Backs are in the eye, and Tryon will drop back, look to throw, intended for Hex Walker. Flag on the play, though. And Tryon was was rushed, and I don't know, maybe this could be a roughing the passer. Certainly shouldn't be any kind of grounding because the, number 30 is an eligible receiver. Illegal man downfield for the for the Eagles. Mm. So that's a five yard penalty. Four and a half to go, third quarter. And still Egan held scoreless by this Newman Garetti D. So second and six, and it is Tryon, Hex in motion here to the near side, throws the football, bouncing around and incomplete. Looking that time for Steven Bronson. And when it's all said and done, maybe it's fortunate for the Eagles that that one was an incompletion because that almost was a tip drill INT. Oh yeah, very, very close there. So now third and six. I mean, last time they were around this area, we saw Coach Techman punt away. I mean, maybe he's starting to think about four down, utilizing all four downs to keep this drive going right now. And the handoff from Tryon is close to enough for a first down. And again, Tayshawn Tainer. Yes. And he does have an Eagles first down with 4.14 to go. Unfortunately, though, for Commonwealth League and Catholic, they got a uh, man shaken up. There's an injury timeout right now on the field. And that'll allow us to step aside for just a moment. We'll return to action here from South Philadelphia in a bit. This is Tommy Green from the 1993 National League Champion Phillies. And here's the pitch. BCWSA Water and Sewer customers, you have a new and improved option to pay your bill that's convenient, reliable, and secure. Powered by Invoice Cloud, you can pay your bill 24-7 online, pay by text or phone, or sign up for auto pay to avoid fees for late or missed payments. Visit bcwsa.net to sign up or for more info. That's bcwsa.net. BCWSA, prove it. Offensive lineman Michael Hanna was the guy shaken up for Conwell Egan Catholic. Good to see he was able to get up on his own feet, but slow to get over to the sideline. Hopefully he'll be able to return to play as Tryon claps, calls for the football, has it, throws downfield, looking for his man, but incomplete off of the hands of Sam Cooper. Not sure if he was going to be able to stay in bounds over there. But the... Incompletion stops the clock with 4.04 to go. Yeah, good coverage and there by Newman Garetti. Now second and 10, but not a bad idea for Egan. Like I said earlier, they tried to go to Sam Cooper to throw to him in the flat. Whether it's in the flat or down the sideline, give your one of your best athletes an opportunity. Again, Tryon claps, has the football, throws to Gipley, and Gipley 
has oh. the grab. He oh. brings it in at the two yard line. Catch is made, a huge play for Conwell Egan Catholic. First and goal to go. And they'll say he was out at the three. Wow. And timeout on the field, and it looks like it's Gipley, who probably is just having some muscle cramps right now. But an injury timeout. We'll step aside, and we'll return uh, here to the field in just a little bit on WBCB. From Philadelphia to the Lehigh Valley and everywhere in between, for 150 years, Penn Community Bank has been a part of your neighborhood. Helping businesses start, supporting families as they grow, and staying connected to the people and places that make this region special. It's who we are and where we're from. Penn Community Bank, here we are and here we grow. Don't let joint pain bring you down. See how you can get relief at a free joint pain seminar at St. Mary Orthopedics. Joint care experts will inform and answer questions about diagnosing, managing, and treating joint problems and knowing when it's time for a joint replacement. Ready to get back to life? Get to the next free joint pain seminar. Details at stmaryhealthcare.org slash joint seminar. It's your health. Expect more. Red October is back, and so is our new Toyota inventory, with in-demand popular models arriving monthly, like the all-new Grand Highlander and Sequoia, or reliable classics like the RAV4 and Camry. And with no markups above MSRP in our Teammate Rewards program, you can see for yourself why our home team advantage is so important. Shop online at... Wow, what a grab by Tim Gipley a diving effort and has set his Egan Eagles up with a first and goal. Unfortunately though, Gipley was shaken up. He is slow to get over to the sideline and now we're ready to go. Tryon gives the football to Tayshawn Tainer and he pushes his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Egan on the scoreboard. It's 12 to six with 3.39 to go here in today's game. Well, and they needed some big plays, and they got them from Tayshawn Tainer, and then a huge grab from Tim Gipley to put them right near the goal line. Yeah, excellent job just getting them near there and just pounding it into the end zone, getting on the board. And now Osterberry looks to add one more. High snap, but... It's placed down, the kick is up and good. Wow, some intense pressure there for Newman Goretti to try to block the kick. It was out of the hold of Justin Layton and Osterbury splits the upright. So we come back up the field with the score 12-7, 339 to go in the third quarter of tonight's District 12 3A first round action. Well, now I added in tonight. <laughs> we were here in the morning, and now it's the afternoon, but it's not yet nighttime, so that's jumping the gun a little bit. But we got a lot more of this game to get to. And when it looked like Egan was down and out, they continue to fight and right play, back play a little now. field position. Yeah. You, you got to credit Osterbury's uh, punt, his kick. Uh, he's pinned NG deep a couple of times. The first punt was uh, was kind of a shank, but yeah. since then, Smooth sailing. he's been a big part yeah. of uh, this this effort so far. And Osterbury with a short kick comes down at the 22 yard line, taken there by Prescott. And he gets up to the 21. The ball comes loose, but the play was dead. Returned by Makai Mitchell, but M M Mitchell only went east and west. He didn't go up the field at all. First and 10 for the Saints from their own 21 yard line. Yeah. 
And now for Egan, this defense, which has played pretty well, they still have to keep this Newman Garetti team bottled up. Here is Wharton from the gun. Hands off to Terrence Page. And they have Page bottled up right there. He's brought down at the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing on that play. Runs right into Connor Horger. He froze. <laughs> 